guys and welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all of that kind of jazz wherever you're listening to your podcast before we get into it today. So I'm here with Ben as usual and we're doing another Q&A episode today. So we haven't done one of these for ages and if you haven't listened to a Q&A episode before, basically they're just um, episodes where our listeners chuck questions at us uh, and that's either through our um, Instagram uh, profile or our uh, Snowy's Camping Show group on Facebook um, or also through through YouTube. Um, but most of our questions today have just been through our Facebook and our Instagram. I think we hit up some internal questions too, didn't we? So well, you know- one of the questions was a generic stuff at Snowy's question, so I punted that to the internal. So I've got some internal answers, but there's no internal oh, questions. Answers. Right, okay. Zahn, who is on our web team, she's our blog manager. She did post um, something on the Instagram question response thing about you and your arms, but I wasn't 100% My sure arms. that that was appropriate <laughs> <laughs> to add into the I, podcast today. What? No, let's. I'll find out more about that one afterwards. No, it's more just like more arm movements, please. Oh, really? We have this joke. Yeah, yeah we have this joke <laughs> that Ben uses his arms and his hands a lot when he talks, like a lot, a lot. And so I'm like, Ben, <laughs> you know, don't use your arms as much. So but, he, he trolls me all the time with keeping his arms by his side, like, and oh, totally emotionless. I'm totally not going to be paranoid about using my arms in <laughs> anything. I'll sit here still and tape into the desk. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, I'm talking about my arms and all that jazz and all that jazz, jazz hands. <laughs> um, right, so it. let's get into it. Our first question is from Colin Gibson uh, through our Facebook group, and he's asked, "It would be great to know why you can't get the Jet Boil Genesis Base Camp in Australia." Well, the, so we are in what, what month? We're in March 2022 at the moment. For yep. those listening to this in the future, so mm-hmm. hopefully it will be here. Yes. At some stage in the near future, but it's down to the, the authorities that test and pass all of those gas appliances yeah, to get AGA. into Australia, the AGA. Mm-hmm. I think there's another organisation too that does the testing, but let's just refer to AGA. So nothing to do with the supplier. They want to get it in, mm-hmm. but to be able to sell it legally, in it's Australia. got to get that little tag or sticker, mm-hmm. little green sticker that says it's passed yeah. for use in Australia, for safe use in Australia to our standards, and that just takes ages that's right. It does take ages. And also the other thing people probably don't realise is um, a lot of stuff in America like Coleman stoves, for example, the MSR pocket rocket, that was another massive example of one that that was physically in stock in Australia with the supplier but they had not got authority to sell it for probably 18 months. But it nearly took, I reckon it was two and a half, almost three years maybe. Mm. I don't know if I've pulled that out out of somewhere, but um, it was a really long time that it took for that to get approved and finally be available for sale. Yeah. But so US gas standards, gas appliance standards are very different to Australian standards. And so a lot of the products that are available there can't legally be sold in Australia because they're not deemed safe. So often that process of um, approval, I think also might come like it's rigorous testing and things like that, but I think they also might liaise with the the manufacturing brand as well potentially um and to that's make changes. to make changes yeah. and i think that's why it also can take so long and then that manufacturing brand might make a different a slightly different version of the stove or or um whatever gas appliance strictly for the australian market do you know what it is about the the australian standards that are so far i, I didn't know that there was much difference between us and australian standards i just thought mm. it took a long time for our organization to just get to that pile of papers on their desk but no i think it's a standards thing i think (laughs) like one of them as a very very basic is that there's a lot of outdoor use only appliances in australia that are approved for indoor use in america so a lot of people will be like oh no you can use that indoors and it's like maybe in america you can but you definitely can't in australia so sometimes it might just be as simple as making sure that the brand packaging and marketing and warnings is in line with Australian standards. And then sometimes it's also the actual physical product itself. Mm. But I don't really know what what they are. A classic example is those, um, I think we still have them, the buddy, the Mr. Heater buddy heaters that we saw oh, for yeah. many, many years. Yeah. And if you looked at the US site, they didn't really say you couldn't use it indoors, but everywhere in Australia, 
they said don't use it indoors. Yeah. And obviously it must come down to, like you say, to the Australian standards there. And they all come with that little diagram at the start that's got like the little line diagram of mm. an enclosed shelter, for an example of where you should and shouldn't use it and airflow and, and all those things. Yep. So, yeah, they're obviously very strict for our safety. Uh, so nothing to do with the retailer no. or the wholesaler. It's um, when they can legally – Sell, sell it, it. In Australia. but on on the actual genesis, I can say that it is currently going through that approval phase, and it's entering into the last phase now. But there's not really any time frame that can be given on how long that last phase will take. But okay. I would be looking forward to seeing it sometime this year. Hopefully, hopefully, be good. Yeah, I think manufacturers get it into that process pretty quick because they yeah. all know it takes so long. So yeah. Anyway, that's number one. Uh. Question number two from Harry Blades. And Harry is also asked if we can have a bit of a shout out to the listeners for their opinions on this as well. And that goes mm. for all of these questions. Please give your opinions and let us know if we're off track as well. But he's doing a lap of Australia in 2023. And he wants to know, ute canopy, camper trailer or caravan? Yeah, and he said he'd done uh, a fair bit of his own research on this stuff already, but he still can't nail down a choice. Mm. Um, I don't know. For me personally, I think it depends. And Harry, I will add this, Harry's a young fellow with a partner, so he's not a family um, family guy with kids to consider and things like that. I would personally go with putting a ute canopy on. I wouldn't bother trying to tow something um, unless you're okay to potentially leave it somewhere and, and even – yeah, even possibly pay for nights that your camper trailer set up somewhere if you want to go somewhere else that you can't access or tow into easily. You've got fuel economy to work to consider, yep. um, all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. If it's just if it's just the two of you, I would definitely go for a ute canopy. I'm with you there. Pick something easy to set up um, and the, the money that you're going to save on the camper trailer or caravan, you can invest in the upgrades or GVM upgrades you need to carry a good uh, – um, rooftop tent, something yep. on the back of that canopy. Mm-hmm. The only downside to that is if you uh, are staying somewhere for five nights and you need your car, you need to pack up your tent yeah. each night. So so just have a think about what rooftop tent you've got there. The, yeah. the, um, some of those hard shell ones really are very easy to set up and you, you could – very easily set them up and, and pack them down each day. Mm. Um, the other ones are still pretty easy, but do require a little some some peg points and things just to sort of secure it down. Um, but yeah, just for two people, mm. you've just got you've got you know really accessible if you've just got everything on a ute canopy. That's assuming I suppose that he's got a um, like a, a cab chassis with with like a leaf spring mm-hmm. um, tray on the back or a, a dual cab. I suppose, but yeah, that yeah. would be my choice as well. Yeah. I think, um, you know, in all the travels I've done, I have seen plenty of young couples towing a camper trailer or a smaller caravan. So it's definitely something that people do choose to do. But if it was me, I mean, on a recent trip that I just went on, there was a, a group of, a, I think, two or three couples that were traveling together and they all had land cruisers and utes and they were all just in their single vehicles and I was just like man that's just the way to do it yeah because they you know they can pull down onto a beach camp there for the night if they want they're gone by nine o'clock the next morning because there's not heaps of pack up to worry about yep. they were all sleeping in their their actual cars and had sets up like that so they didn't have a rooftop tent but yeah that would be my go-to yeah so right. yeah let us know um what what Harry should consider or things that you've done if you've travelled around Australia as, as a couple yeah, um, and help Harry make up his mind. You knew the next question? Yeah. Mal Lee. Now he's popped this one into our Facebook group. Have you done a recent review or podcast of the Backcountry Outdoor Gourmet Company uh, freeze dry meals, please? Looking for something we can leave in the pantry of our camper for a quick overnight stops. We, we were talking about this late last year of doing mm. a bit more. We do sort of have something on the pipeline trying to do something a bit more practical with reviews of these kinds. Yeah, a little bit more than here's a photo and, and I'll taste it and let you know what I think mm. because everyone's tastes are different, right? So we, yeah. have, we have discussed how we can maybe try and get the uh, how uh, 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 um, these meals look, taste, feel, cook, Sort of off, more off a screen or off a you know a bit of paper and actually give you an idea on how they how they might taste as best we can yeah. anyway short of being able to smell and taste it yourself totally so we have got a little bit of that in the pipeline yeah. um, that would probably be um, I don't know some sort of 
kitchen arrangement with you and I <laughs> cooking. We've no idea actually how no it's going to look yet. But, it'll be fun. Um, it'll we'll probably fumble our way through it. So we do. Uh, we haven't done a recent review. We, we haven't, have but opinion. Uh, we can give our opinions on them. I mean, they're yeah, not. We can, yeah. They seem to be a bit hit and miss, though. It's like some of them are really brilliant, and some of them are like not so great. Mm. But I've had ones where I'm like, no way, I would eat this, and you're like, actually, it's pretty good. Yeah. So it's not like it's necessarily a blanket. Oh, this is gross, and and yeah. this isn't. It comes down to personal preference. I'd say it depends when you eat it too. I've had them when I'm hiking, and they've always tasted good. Uh, but mm. then I've taken them camping when I've been cooking other meals with with good ingredients as well, and just had them as a. I always take a some of those just as like an emergency meal if something mm. happens and we run out of food. I've got another emergency meal because they just store for as long as so you need well. them somewhere yeah. anywhere in the car. And the last trip we went on, we did on one of the last nights. We thought, oh, we'll have this for the night and really easy dinner. We cooked it up, and I was less than excited because we had been cooking reasonable pasta meals or yeah. um, quesadillas and, and stuff with, with when I say proper ingredients, it was canned ingredients and stuff, but it was, um, it, it was a little fresher, I suppose, mm. than the freeze dried stuff. Now it, it, they are real ingredients in there and yeah. they're freeze dried and they're really good for what the, the nutrition they give, um, and the sort of texture and flavor that it is. They're actually pretty good for the, for the yeah. weight that you carry. But when you, when you, Eaten next to real food, I found it less than exciting. Same. So. And, I mean, Mal, you mentioned here that you're looking for something that you can leave in your camper for overnight stops. I I don't know if I would be going for a freeze-dried meal. Like for me the appeal of a freeze-dried meal is literally when you're doing light adventures, lightweight adventures where you need to carry your food. Mm. I don't necessarily think they're um, a pleasing enough substitute for a meal when you would – otherwise be having normal food. I think if you did just want sort of freeze-dried meals, I would be going for the Radix over the backcountry and outdoor gourmet only They're because good, yeah. in my experience they tend to be more closely resembling a meal that you could cook at home. Yep. Whereas the outdoor gourmet and, and backcountry, even though they're great for hiking, things like that, they're not not as amazing as Radix, yeah. I don't think. I think if it's a camper trailer or let's um, leave in the pantry or camper for a quick overnight stop, so I'd probably sooner look at um, some canned stuff or, or some of that that long life yeah, sort of true. products to mix up a. Um, I mean, we always have a, a, a when, when we travelled did an extended travel, we had a really easy pasta that we did, and it mm. used canned vegetables, right? Yeah, not, right? Not the best vegetables, but canned vegetables with a can of. Um, diced tomatoes mm-hmm. and some herbs and sometimes we chuck tuna and stuff in there and yep. it made an okay meal um, yeah. that didn't require any refrigeration. It's It sat for as long as it wanted in, in the car. Yeah. Um, and I found that probably to be a little bit nicer than some of the freeze-dried meals. Yeah. Um, especially if you're having it regularly. I do find if you have those freeze-dried meals regularly, it can have a bit of an impact on your Overall on digestive. microbiome. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, maybe because they're so – rich in um, energy but perhaps yeah. is, because they are designed to replace a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, in terms of the question on whether Backcountry and Outdoor Gourmet are the same um, company, um, the, as far as I'm aware, they're not. Backcountry Cuisine is New Zealand-based and Outdoor Gourmet is um, – They're supplied is in Australia by the same supplier but yep. they're not the same company. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, outdoor Gourmet uh, um, is associated with Cedar Summit, Summit in some way, yeah. I think. I think. Um, I, I can't recall just where the where the uh, the roots of that came from, but they are different companies. We also have actually just quickly. I'm interrupting you here. What's that other New Zealand company that we have on the shelf? Not Natural Life. It's called something else, and it's the, it only comes in four different flavors, but it's and it's um comes in like a a vac sealed bag, but it's not dehydrated. Oh, um, it, they're Indian meals, aren't they? A, you can get a, a curry and, and there's, a, but yeah, um, what is it? It's, um, yeah, I don't know one. what it's called. We've come totally unprepared. I mean, we didn't read the questions Do you want to quickly beforehand. Google it? Um, that, so that, they, that packaging is called retort packaging, right? Okay, and, so it's and, retort packaging. You could just put it in a in a, a boiling pot of water or something and you get this curry or this yep. stew because it's fresh, it's not rehydrated. So that could be a good alternative. Yeah, and they the, – they are um, go native. Go native. Uh, yeah, Larry. We just had a <laughs> secret whisper in our ear. Yeah, Larry said it's go native. Um, so they are. They're basically. So that's retort packaging, right? Yeah. I looked into this a while ago. It's the same as cans. It's retort right, packaging. Okay. So they're cooked in an environment that is, you know, 
bug free. It's yep. hot, and they're packaged hot and mm. then sealed, so yeah. the bacteria can't get in there. Yeah, right. So it's it's the meal cooked hot, mm. sealed up. Mm. It's not dehydrated or anything, and then you just reheat it. Yeah, and you can actually get. Um, there used to be a, a brand that I don't see around anymore called I think it was Happy Camper. I'm not sure if it's still I remember Happy Camper. They had an entire lamb shank. Yeah. And so you could feel this lamb shank in this, this mm. packet and you just drop it in the hot water and heat it up. So mm. that, yeah, is a better way yeah. to have a good meal that stays fresh in the in the pantry for many years. And even if it goes past a use-by date, it's not even a use-by date. It's a best-before date, right? Yeah. To me, a best-before date is literally just that. A it's, guideline. It's good for any any yeah. period of time after the best-before date. My wife hates that. I'm like, no, it's, no, it's three years past, but it's best-before. So it might not taste yeah. as good, but I can, still, I can still safely eat it. <laughs> I'm with you so, on that. <laughs> so um, you can store them for as long as you like. It just means that the quality or the taste reduces a little bit over time. So yeah. that's a good way about it. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, yeah, I would I would go for something like that over a dehydrated meal. Yeah, if definitely. I wasn't hiking or sort of lightweight adventuring, easy to prep as well. You can heat it up in the same water that you then make your coffee or something mm. with too. So yeah, I feel like we're at three questions in, we and are, we've just yacked we so yeah. okay, much. We need to, so we I think need we to, might um, do the next ones a bit more. Okay, so this fire. is uh, Instagram. We got a good response. Uh, Navy scrubs. In your vast experience, what's the best option for mozzies when camping? Well, my wife is a mozzie magnet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the best option is to use everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I use a thermosil, um, yeah. which is a little gas powered thing with a little mm-hmm. hat in it. And I can't think of the name of the active ingredient. We hang that up and then I'll quite often have a mozzie call there as well. And my wife's doused herself in deep. Okay. So it well, wasn't say doused herself. She's yeah. followed, the, followed the instructions. Yeah. Um, that <laughs> seems to be the best option um, short of covering up. Yeah, I um, up until sort of sometime last year would have been like I couldn't tell you because mozzies never bother me, but since we went on a on an air trip, we went to the Air Peninsula over Christmas New Year period, and I got nailed, and I also got nailed with midges because I oh, really? remember in a podcast I can't tell you what episode it was, but we maybe the creepy crawlies episode possibly um, seems topical seems topical. I was saying how, oh, you know, I don't think I've never experienced midges in, in South Australia. And someone was like, oh, you know, over on the Air Peninsula, they're rife. And I was like, I've never had them on the Air Peninsula. And whilst I was away camping, I was thinking of that guy who commented on YouTube right. about them. And I was like, oh, my God, it's right because I got nailed by midges. Oh, no. I got nailed by mozzies. First time really? ever. Ruined my whole trip because we didn't come prepared for it because it's never an issue for me. So now every single time I'm prepared. Wow. And we've recently just come back from a, a trip to KI and um, I bought a mozzie net. And so because we're in the van, I've put the big box mozzie net over, th- you know, suspended it from the roof over the bed and nothing ever gets in there. So I yeah. set that up at the beginning of the trip. That was amazing. Yeah. But other than that, I use a mozzie spray um, and try and cover up. I wear socks and, you yep. know, because I've not found mozzie coils or the mozzie sticks or any of that to be really very effective at all. And I was thinking about getting a thermocell because we, you know, carry a, um, a jet boil. So we've already used those gas canisters. Yep. But, yeah, for me the most effective is just to protect your actual physical persons yeah. with clothing and repellent spray yep. um, and to keep all your zips and everything shut and so that your sleeping space is completely void yep. of – Mozzies. I agree. The the barrier thing is probably the best way about it because the yeah. thermosel and the and the mozzie coils are good if there's no wind mm-hmm. and and it just kind of fills up your awning and you and you're kind of you're sitting in the smell. Yeah. But if there's a wind, it's just blowing away. But yeah, I think using a barrier is probably the best yeah. way about it. You're probably not going to stop all the mozzies, but you'll stop most of them if you've yeah. got a net over the top of you. Yeah. Let's keep going. Jessica Hunt, Mm. tips or tricks tricks to help while camping in the rain? We have actually got an episode on this. Mm. Episode. No. As if you're going to remember that. No, I I wasn't. I was thinking because, (laughs) well, I I quote it a fair amount because a lot of people ask about, you know, wind and rain when they're camping and so it's a good, oh, yeah, go and check out this episode. Eat my own words. I feel like maybe I want to say seven, but I could be wrong. We'll um, post it in the show notes. We'll post it in the show yeah, notes. So we have got a whole episode on that, Jessica, if you want more inf- like info on that. But yep. um, Enjoy it. 
firstly. Yeah. If it's windy and rainy, it's the pits. If it's just rain yeah, and you just need some shelter, enjoy the pitter-patter of the rain. Just be prepared. It'll sort of be prepared and be aware of the weather in advance. Check out your weather predictions and stuff from BOM or your local agency before you go so you're ready for it. Make sure you got all your guy ropes out and your fly is fully tensioned so that rain is funneling off efficiently. Um, make sure you've got somewhere to to shelter or socialise that's yep. under the cover um, because if you've got a smaller tent or a tent where you haven't got room for socialising in it, it can be a bit in the pits, mm. like make you feel like you're stuck. So just an extra tarp or something that you can string up between tent and car or something. Just yeah, to, extra just to tarp extra or a, you know, yeah. a gazebo or something if you've got it. If you're going in a group, try yep. and maybe work out something together. We'll post the show note, uh, um, the link to that episode. Anyway, but yeah, post the link notes. to that episode yeah. as well because that's got a bunch of other interesting stuff. Next one's easy. Max from Instagram says, when are you going to open a store in Sydney? Well, we're not. We, well, Sorry. We, we don't actually know. Yeah, probably. It's, it's I mean, not. at the moment, it's not on our radar. Uh, uh, fr- from the point of view of us sitting here in the podcast room yeah, anyway. That's true. And there's <laughs> other people elsewhere who uh, I don't know what the plans are, but yeah. nothing nothing we're aware of. So nothing sorry, we're aware but of. we have an awesome online store and we'll get it delivered to you as quick as we can. So mm. sorry, Max, to sorry, disappoint Max. you there. Uh Eva, walking Eva life. Walking Best life. sleeping bag for bigger people. Well Well, if you're saying bigger as in more cuddly like me or you're saying bigger <laughs> as in more tall. tall like you, then there's a couple of different options. Cedar Summit bags and, and some other brands as well, but Cedar Summit do long versions, mm-hmm. um, which you fit into a long, don't you? Yeah, I just fit into a regular because okay. um, I'm 185 and most regular is about 183, 185, and that seems to be give or take mm. five centimetres a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, but – for comfort, I usually go along just to yeah. give me that little bit of extra space. Yeah, I think one my partner's one ninety one, and I think he fits into a long one ninety one. I don't yeah. know your partner; he's tall. Yeah, he's quite um, he's quite cuddly too. <laughs> so for <laughs> tall, tall people, um, uh, go for long, but go for a longer if, version. If, if it's if it's broader shoulders, and we we'll use your term, cuddly, cuddly, um, yeah. Uh, the, a hiking bag is usually going to be tighter. If it's just for general camping, then there's the heaps of options. The women's specific bags from Cedar Summer, even the hiking versions, do tend to be a little bit narrower in the shoulder because women tend to be a bit narrower. But they are wider sort of through the body in the hip area. So they give you, I mean, I've tested them out and I hate being restricted in a sleeping bag, but they tend to give you a fair bit of extra room. But they do a, they've changed the name of it recently, Amplitude. I'm pretty yep. sure it is. They do a down amplitude and a synthetic base camp, mm-hmm. which do compress pretty well and they come in two different warmth ratings and they are like a huge big oh, right. sack sleeping bag. You know yep. the big – They look when you look at them, they just look like a, a huge big cocoon yeah, yeah. but with loads of room. Yep. And when you're in it, you feel like a Michelin man, but you do have loads of room. And that's sort of I need to upgrade my sleeping bag and I'm tossing in – up between getting that and that and getting an amplitude because I don't like restricted bags. I get a bit claustrophobic. Yeah, okay. But the amplitude and the base camp series, have a look at them online, um, Eva, because you'll be able to, I don't, I can't describe the shape really very easily. But I don't know what you mean, yeah, because my uh, cause mummy shape is kind of comes out of the shoulders and then tapers down to the feet, right? Yeah. And you've got different sort of shapes. A so women's bag tapers out a little bit further, but you're just saying it just kind of balloons it's out. It's just like a the, giant – it looks like yeah. a giant big balloon, a big fluffy balloon. Yeah, okay. Um, and I reckon they're great because they've got a huge internal circumference. They've got loads of room. Yep. If you wriggle around in your sleep or you sleep starfish or all that sort of jazz, they're a really good option to look at. And they're also a really popular bag for um, motorcycle tourists and stuff who tend to be bigger bloats. Yep. And the feedback we've got from there is that they're pretty good. And I think our um, customer support manager's partner has the older version, the older down version, and he's at Gav. He's a big oh, bloke yeah. and he, he fits comfortably, fits comfortably and okay. loves it. So, well, and as I said, me, I'm obviously not a big bloke, but I am more on the cuddly side of things and that would definitely be the bag that would make me feel so the happiest. So I guess it's the shape of the bag. For a lightweight bag, look for like tapered rectangular or, or what you say. Don't look for mummy because mummy's yeah. going to be much tighter. Yeah. If it's just general camping, then there's heaps of square bags that are going to have space. Yeah. And uh, on our website, we try and put 
um, oh, like a week yeah, through internal you, circumference. I, I, on all assume, of our products. I assume even meant hiking because she yeah, said she's walking, walking life, life, but yeah. she, she could have meant, Eva, you could have meant camp, just general car camping, yeah. sorry. But check um, our website because we have got, I can't remember the stat, but it's like internal circumference, the, internal circumference or width. And I think Cedar Summit mm. actually give like a shoulder, hip and a, and a foot um, circumference as oh, well. Do, so yeah. you can compare them. And we sort of try to take measurements to give you an idea of how much space is in the bags. So. If you're just doing car camping or full drive touring or things like that, um, Darchi and Cedar Summit do a, a 1100 sleeping bag, which oh, yeah. is like a king, king single sleeping bag, which means it's 1.1 wide. Yep. So it's not quite a double, but it's much wider than a single. So yep. if you do need a nice big sleeping bag um, that you don't need to pack and carry with you, um, that they'd be, be look good at looking at, worth looking at, I should say. I don't know how to say this person's name. Sorry, Joseph, Josephski. Josephski. Well, it's, it's an Instagram handle, so yeah. it's uh, mattress toppers for swags. I'm not 100 percent sure. I just buy mattress topper. I would just go to you know Target, Kmart, Spotlight, any just your cover. homeware store, and just get a. Well, you know, mattress toppers. They're like something you put on top of your mattress just to make it a little bit extra squishy. Oh, okay. A little bit of extra. Yeah, right. Squish and comfort or whatever. You can get ones that are. Um, that have like the walls on them, like a fitted sheet that tuck underneath the mattress and hold mm. them in place. And you can also get ones that are just a top, like a topper. And it's just like an extra mattress pad. Um, often it will be filled with synthetic fiber. You can get down ones, you can get merino wool ones, and they just, yeah, like an extra pad that sits on the top. Okay. The only thing about it though is that obviously – residential mattress sizes aren't going to line up with mm. the swag size. Yep. So it's unlikely that you're going to get one that will straightforward fit. But if you've got a single mattress topper just, you know, from any of your shops, um, I reckon a Merino one would probably be the best bet just for temperature regulating and comfort in your swag and it's not something whether you or not you're in in summer or winter, you're still going to get good performance out of it because Merino has that good, um, as I said, temperature regulating. But even if it was a bit too wide or anything, you could easily tuck it under the sides and it's not going to add heaps of bulk. I just use an old, um, just a bed sheet, old fitted bed sheet for my, it's not a topper, it's just a sheet and it doesn't fit tight but- if it's still got the elastic, it just tucks in underneath. It's a bit loose on top. But yeah. That's that's all I use. When I was younger, like our nana and pa had got all of our swag sorted and we had actual sheep skins in with our swags. And okay. that was really comfortable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think, yeah, you could just pick one up at the at a homeware stores. There's no sort of mattress toppers custom. specifically for yeah. camping. So next one's easy. Mm-hmm. Because we don't know. Well, um, I do. I actually well, do, do know about but this. But our website should have the latest detail. Well, Ron Doggy Dog has asked, when will you have the <laughs> – Ron Doggy Dog. Ron Doggy Dog. When will you have the Zempire Air Force One in stock? Well, we won't because it's a Tent World exclusive with okay. Zempire. Right. So some brands will um, specifically allocate some – models within their range to be exclusives at different retailers. Okay. Um, and the Air Force series is exclusive to Tentwell. Okay, which there you is go. sad for us but not sad for Ron Doggy because he can still get it. Yeah. I thought we used to have it a long time ago. Maybe yeah, the V2. Change, but... It's the version 2 now. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Kobe Smith, 2007, how to fix snapped swag poles. Well, if it's a snapped swag pole and you're talking either fiberglass or um, alloy, you need to replace it. The, the broken section. Um, I think Daichi do a, a little repair kit, which comes with a, a length that you Darchi can cut. do. Cut they do two length. different swag pole repair kits for aluminium. Yep. One is a segmental uh, swag and the other one is a dome swag repair kit. So yep. something like um, one that has the, the arched hoops mm-hmm. versus ones that have – more of a, I don't know what you'd call them. They're like not a, a hoop. They're more like a, yeah, they've yeah. got little angles on them yep. and they're, yeah. So yeah. that's called a segmental yep. swag. Um, if it's fiberglass, then you can just get replacement, same diameter, fiberglass yep. poles. You cut it to length and replace that section. But if it's broken, then usually your swag, most race will come with a little sleeve that a lot of people say, well, what is this sleeve for? It's a little tube, And that's a little isn't tube, it? yeah, a little repair kit. So if your pole does break, you slide that over the top, use some tape to keep it in place, and mm. that just gives you a bit of stability to get you through the trip. Get but you if through it's the broken, trip. you need to replace that section. 
Uh, we do, have, do a have a video, video on that. Yeah. I think you did it. I did you? do yeah. it. It's just it's it's for tent poles, but it's applicable for any poles that are joined by elastic that pull apart and fold up. So you yep. can use exactly the same method um, as in that video on our YouTube channel um, to repair your swag poles. Yep. The alloy ones are a bit harder to find. They are a bit harder to find. The fiberglass ones are a bit more generic. Alloy ones you probably need to go back to the actual manufacturer to see yeah. if you can get a, a specific part, a pole at the same length. So. Uh, yeah, and a lot of manufact- swag manufacturers will um, have replacement pole sets available if that's something that you'd prefer as well. Yeah, but inquire with where you bought it from. Yeah. I think I've done the last two. Yeah. Do the next have one. you? Okay, so – only because I don't know how to say that. Jay no. Heditz, <laughs> uh, what is your absolute favourite product that Snowies have which you couldn't go without? Oh, Aer- I haven't read these questions in advance Aeropress. and so I'm not prepared. Well, Aeropress, of course, you Aeropress with your coffee. coffee. Or the X Kettle. They go hand in hand. X, X Kettle. Yeah. Okay, I've never really been endeared to the X pot it's range. Good. The X Kettle is great. Yeah, right. For my coffee. Okay. I think the thing that bothers me about them is that the actual capacity of the kettle versus how much you can put in it is quite different. So if you buy a two-litre kettle, it's only like actually a 1.6-litre kettle, for example, because you can't put more than 1.6 litres in it. But that's the same with any product, with any kettle. They measure it to the top so you can fit that much in there, but Mm. you wouldn't actually boil it that full, would you? Yeah, but if if you're buying a one-litre kettle – and then it arrives and you can only put 600 meals in it, that sometimes that can be a bit disappointing. They do have a maximum boil point on yeah. it, which is there for safety reasons to not yeah. let it boil over the top. So. Right. So you, What's Aero- yours? That's oh. mine. I'm not. I mean, what I should say is first aid kit or tent or something really should be Because I, you're so practical. Yeah. My wife would go, oh, safety bends out again. Yeah, safety bend. Oh, but. I like that. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> safety bend. But – um. But well, I, I couldn't go without my coffee. I've said in the past to scrub a wash bag and I'm going to say it mm-hmm. again because on the last trip that I was on, we didn't pack it because we couldn't find it and I think I've lent it to somebody or something, which is a rookie mistake, <laughs> but we couldn't find it anywhere. So we're like, oh, we'll go without it. And I w- and every single day I was like, I want my scrub a wash bag. Like I, I really, really missed it. And so scrub a wash bag, which I know I've said before, but – also, a, a brand new one is that I don't – I've never had those collapsible containers before, like oh, the collapsible good. tubs, yeah, and yeah. I just decided to buy some for the last trip that I did because, you know, often I'll, I'll cut half an avocado or I'll open up something in a packet and I'll need to go back in the fridge and then the packet deteriorates and it's just like, ah. So I was like, no, nah, I'm going to buy these tubs. I love those tubs. Yeah, they're great. I love them so much. Yeah. I can't believe how awesome they are <laughs> and how great they work and I'm going to get another set. And they just – there's so much room in my kitchen, even with to store them. I just, no, nah, they're yeah, great. We've got them. We used to have, um, it was like a lock and lock set that came with Ingle, my fridge oh, yeah, when yeah. I bought it many years ago. Mm. And it's basically, basically like Tupperware. When they're empty, Are they're, they collapsible? they're bulky. No, oh, they're, okay. they're like a rigid thing. But when you're still, like they're great, mm. but when they're empty, yeah. they, they, they just kind of kick around. You're constantly moving them around in the back of the car because they kind of don't really store neatly. Yeah. But we've got the flat pack ones and you can just, pack them on top of stuff yeah. when you're not using them and then when you do need them they pop out if you only need half a container you can yeah. just pop it out halfway well the little one i fit in half a massive avocado no worries the second size up which i think is green i fit a 500 gram block of butter in that no worries and that just stayed in there the whole time and yep. didn't have to worry about it and then i put some bacon in the orange one or whatever but as i used up the bacon i just popped up the bottom rung so even though the tub was still working it just it was a smaller yeah. profile. I don't know. I just thought they were brilliant and they just washed so easily and they clipped just in. Wipe and off, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I what? just – I was expecting less from them given sort of they do look a bit gimmicky and they possibly look maybe a bit well, – No, they could. You know, no, nah, they're brilliant. Wouldn't one, be without them. One tip on it though, and this happens to us almost every time we go camping, we just don't learn. We usually take a pancake mix. In fact, we, pro- we pre-mix a oh, pancake yeah. mix in – the blue one, I think, fits okay. two lots of pancake mix in there. So we'll You're put right. the salt and everything in and just kind of shake around. So all we have to do is add the milk. Without fail, every time, like it fills to the top, right? It's pretty mm-hmm. full. And you go to put the lid on 
And as you're putting the lid on, the it bottom rung out. collapses down oh. and all the flour goes over the top. So okay. don't push down on the top. Don't um, push down on the top in case it, it collapses. Every it. time we go to pack pancake mix and then we go, I've done it again Yeah, every time. I feel like anyway. that's super un- an unexciting answer that I've said a scrubber wash bag and Well, I was going to say tubs. I've gone coffee. Can't go with that coffee. Probably should say first Something aid more. kit and you've gone, I can't go without washing clothes. I must wash clothes. While I'm <laughs> well, it wasn't just the washing clothes. It was more that it. I don't want to take 50 tea, tail, tea towels, you know, and I've got two tea towels and I had a cloth and there was one – we, yeah, um, uh, that's a story for another time. But I mean, they just, how much do you use a tea towel when you're camping? Well, we have lots of dishes and we dry them and then we wipe stuff down with them. Anyway, I just thought there was a couple of times where I was like, I'd really like to be able to efficiently wash these tea towels. Anyway. <laughs> it's getting boring. It's getting real boring. <laughs> the next one, so this is where you pulled in. Other people. Uh, our staff, right? Because someone yeah. says, what's the staff's favourite products? And not not ours, but the, the staff in general. So yeah. it looks like you've oh, it looks like you've uh, pulled uh Well, there was a couple of people who answered. I just chucked it into our internal channel yeah. and I was like, does anybody want to say anything about this? Okay. So, so just from customer service, mm-hmm. there's a sleeping bag liner. It's great in the cold, amazing when it's hot, but you still want something. Uh, but Sorry, I'll start again. It's great in the cold and amazing when it's hot, but you still want something over you, plus keeps your sleeping bag nice and clean. I leave my pillow at home, but I will not leave without my liner. Mm, sleeping bag liner is pretty great. Yeah. Um, Sam from CS as well, customer support, she said trekking poles um, because they help reduce the load on your knees and they're great for pulling you up hills and they're also brilliant for testing the depth of mud holes on the South Coast track in Tasmania. Before your walking buddy goes hip deep. I think I've seen photos of that. <laughs> I think I have as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you can also turn them upside down and use them as tent poles if you are using tarp shelters or there are some other super ultralight tents that um, rely on you having having the trekking poles as well to put them up. So Yeah, I think that's what I'd look at for my next hiking yeah. center. I reckon it's a great idea and I'm all, I'm all for trekking poles as well. Mm. I reckon they're great. Now, Lane from the web team, this one should be interesting. A so- <laughs> a soft-sided cooler. <laughs> Right. I, I always bought a six pack on route to a barbecue. I think he's referring more to uh, just going to a party than a camping. Well, I think, here. well, I said the staff's favorite <laughs> product from Snowy. So it doesn't necessarily yeah, have okay, to be enough, yeah, yeah. camping related. So this is him just being a little bit tight here as well. Cause he's always brought a six pack on route to a barbecue to only drink a few and leave the rest behind. Not anymore. So he just doesn't want to fill up someone else's fridge and leave his beers there. He's, exactly. I mean, that's usually the polite thing to do, right? So yeah, um, yeah, we'll get into him. He also says luggage scales no longer get burnt at the Jetstar desk with an overweight bag, except I think we stopped selling these. I, don't, I thought we still had them. So I think he just maybe needs to stop packing. I think we sell luggage scales generally. I don't yeah, know I if think it's so. the same. Yeah. I think maybe he just packs too many socks or something. He's an overpacker like me yeah, probably. probably. Mm. So Corey from IT, um, I think <laughs> I've noticed a, be- a, a, the a theme, theme here with t- the beer. I he's, wouldn't expect anything less from Corey. No. He said um, his absolute favourite products are a fridge for beer and the Cedar Summer X Cup, which is another one of those collapsible cups um, for beer, <laughs> and a pack safe waste wallet to keep his money safe for beer. <laughs> So I think, and he's finished with smile. And he's finished with a smile, exactly. <laughs> so I think that, um, yeah, Corey might be thinking, well, I don't know, a, a pack safe waste wallet. I think is it's something you much. take when you travel, right? Yeah. So maybe he's drinking. So he's just dreaming about international beer. Everyone's dreaming about Probably. international beer right yeah. now. Uh, Lise, your friend Lise, is right on uh, my level here. Aeropress plus Delta insulated cup. Let's get our priorities straight, folks. <laughs> Coffee, I yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> um, yeah, the Delta insulated cups are brilliant. Yeah. I've got an insulated version, but the insulator's just got that kind of I reckon quite dense neoprene around it. My Delta insulated cup, I have had, I reckon Lise bought it for me, maybe even. Yeah, right. But 11 years ago? Oh, no, I bought it for myself because I was working at a different outdoor store here in Adelaide back then and I remember being pregnant with my youngest, so that would be about 11 or 12 years ago. Yeah, right. They're, le- they're great. Michael from the web team, a round jaffel iron. <laughs> now I was talking to Michael about this because. Let's pick up a couple <laughs> of cheeseburgers on the way for campfire snacks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
I did ask Michael about this. I was like, what cheeseburgers are you talking about? And he was like, oh, you know, you just go past Macca's. Like a whole cheeseburger. You just buy a whole bunch of cheeseburgers <laughs> really? and you chuck them I in your fridge. They don't go off, right? Yeah, that was what he was saying. He was like, it's Macca's. It doesn't go off. Um, and so, yeah, he loves to buy a whole bunch of cheeseburgers and chuck them in his fridge. And then when he's away camping, he puts them in a Jaffa line over the campfire. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I was like, all right. Never thought of that before. I wonder if you could just, if you just got mints and you could just get the, like, cook the burger buns with mints. In, am I going down somewhere I shouldn't here? No, with, but- With mints in the middle yeah. and, and cheese and everything. And, and then just pickles. put the whole thing in a Jaffa line in, and then it's all going to Do you reckon, cook. do you reckon the mints would actually cook though? Or does well, the amount of time sure. the mints need to take to cook be longer than, would the the bread just be like totally crisp. Yeah. Do you know? Try Give it. Give us a try. try it. See it. Let if us anybody know tries it before that. us, yeah. let us know. We won't think about that too much more. Now, Brett. Um, Brett, from, uh, he's also from our web team. He said jet boil zip. Um, feel click boil, fast and easy way to coffee with an AeroPress or freeze dried Radix meal when hiking or camping. I agree actually because I have a Minimo, jet boil Minimo. Oh, yeah. um, and I love it. I love it so, 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 so much. Because the Minimo, which one's the Minimo? The Minimo is the shorter, fatter one. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So we, when obviously if I'm hiking, doing multi-day hiking, it's great, love it. Um, if uh, if we're away camping, we just sort of have it um, or the plan is not immediately right now, but I have it, it my plan is to have it when I open the back door. Mm-hmm. Inside the back door, there's going to be our little like just hot beverage, teas, whatever, and the jet boil will sit in the little cavity there. But in the morning when you get up and you just want a hot beverage, it just sits right there and you just a minute to boil water and you can make your cup of tea or your, your coffees or whatever you're making. You don't have to get your kitchen out. You don't yep. have to do anything like that. Also for road stops, yep, it's just brilliant. It's amazing. I wouldn't be without it. I don't have one, but I've always thought about getting one for exactly those reasons. Yep. I don't want to have to get my whole stove out just to boil. Yep, and I use it more water. for camping than I do – for multi-day hiking because yeah, I don't right. do that as much as I camp and I wouldn't I literally wouldn't be be without it. So yep, I agree with Brett there on the jet ball. So that's all of our staff response. All that we've included here anyway, because we, we don't want to go on forever. But um more questions. And these are still from Instagram, I, I think. I think we've got a couple more, yeah. Uh Jay Town Bay wants tips for taking toddlers camping. Now we did have an episode last season on Camping kids. with kids. But I we think, haven't really we? covered a babies and toddler one. No. Um, you just, just take them. Just for a while. Just take them and let them explore. It was yeah. my thing. Just let them get dirty and dig, in, dig around and, I mean, pack. obviously keep them away from where snakes and stuff are. But Yeah, but pack clothes that you don't mind getting absolutely trashed. Trashed, yeah. Even if you don't have any of those, just go to the op shop, grab some camping stuff. Yeah. I would probably, one of the best investments that we got was – can't remember where it's from, but it's like from a Dutch or a Danish company or something like that. It's called like a puddle suit. I think Mudlarks is an Australian company that do one as well. Oh, yeah. And it's like a waterproof oversuit. It's like a waterproof over onesie. Sometimes they come with a hood, but often oftentimes they don't. And if you're going camping in the winter, in the morning you just wake up, you chuck that on, chuck the gumboots on, chuck a beanie on, and then away they go for the day and it yep. doesn't matter. They They, they get – let them get trash, let them get dirty, let them eat sticks, let Probably, them sort of, you know. Yeah, just let them explore. And, yeah, and, and, and go with them and talk to them about the different things that you can see and help them sort of establish that wonder of being in nature and being in the environment and things like that. And sometimes, or at least for me personally, I found that not being in, like a lot of people might go, oh, go to caravan parks if you've got young kids because it's easier because you have the shower block and you have – you know, these are all those amenities close by. I actually found it easier not being at the caravan park because if you're in the middle of the bush, there's just way more stuff mm. that you can sort of see and do and explore and found it a lot easier to let the kids roam by themselves when you're in the bush, whereas when you're in a caravan park, there's lots of cars around yeah. and like racing kids on bikes and it all can be a little bit busy. So if you're out in the bush and you're somewhere a little bit more secluded or, or something like that, set up, you know, maybe have a – um have yeah, a clear boundary. perimeter and yeah. a boundary where you know that they can go. If they want to go past that, go with them. Don't worry about washing. Take a, uh, you know, I think I got a five or four dollar truck from Big W. 
like a flexible one that you can just fill up with loads of stuff that you unpack when you get there, but then doubles as a bath. Yep. You can just fill up a shallow thing and then they just sit in this little bucket yeah. and, yep. and bath and have some fun. So um, with them, sleeping arrangements, one thing to consider with toddlers because they can't stay on a hiking mat. So try and have something that like bags on the side that keeps them on the mat, particularly yeah. if it's cold weather, because they will end up sleeping on the floor and then they get cold. And, and you know, if, if you are camping in the depths of winter, yep. you're in the, you know, you run the risk of them getting yeah. sick from being cold. But I've always found maybe just putting a bag each side so that when they regular, my youngest daughter just does donuts in her sleep round and round and round and she'll end up in all sorts of places in the tent. Yeah. So we kind of had to sleep each side of her or something so she couldn't just slide off the mat and then end up waking up really cold because she's sleeping totally. right on the ground. So I think um, I probably wouldn't bother investing in a, in a kid's sleeping bag. That would yeah, be what they, I've learned. I think kid they crawl out of it. Kids sleeping just bags are just rubbish. They're never warm enough. They're mm. they're quite small. They don't last very long. I don't ever find them to be the comfort temperature that they say they're going to be. I would a hundred percent recommend you buying a good adult size sleeping bag that's going to be nice and warm, and then just fold it in half, or you know, put a bag on it if you're worried about your kids sort of burrowing down or getting inside it. Um, but get a decent sleeping bag. Polar fleece onesies are amazing. You can get them yeah. real cheap, but they're always a good winner. The kids' sleeping bags used to be better, but the, the recent ones are, I don't know. I don't know. I think we had a couple good for sleepovers. really early on when I had the kids that were young and I just was like, nah, they're just not good. I, I just don't like them as much. I just think, mm. I don't know why, but it seems like outdoor adventure companies, when they're making things for kids, they also think, oh, kids don't need quality Make and it it's cheap. not yeah. necessarily – Right. Well, I've got a kids one from a long time ago that was that was good, but I don't think the latest ones yeah. are, are what they used to be. So, um, snacks, loads of snacks too. <laughs> snacks that they can keep in snacks. their pockets is good. Yeah. Mm. But I think we've sort of yeah, that's all I've got really. Yeah, I was going to ask the next one, J- JB Coaching, and I think we've probably answered this a number of times. But yeah, best coffee makers for camping, um, for me. It's the AeroPress. Yeah. Um, I do like the Wakako ones as well, but I like the AeroPress in particular because you can fill most of it up with water, so you're only boiling water and then you add a bit of milk. You don't yep. have to worry about heating the milk up. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Wakako makes more of your traditional espresso Yeah, like a 30 coffee. mil so, shot. So you make a shot and then you've got to heat the milk up as well. So um, I guess if, you, if you're set up to do that and you're happy to wash the dishes and everything afterwards, mm-hmm. then go for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I prefer the AeroPress because it's just – you make the coffee, you rinse it off, put it back in in the bag, and you're done. Yeah. Do a bit of milk. Like it's just so I easy. I think AeroPress is brilliant. I don't know anybody who has an AeroPress that doesn't like it. No. Do you know um, Brett who who made a comment here? Always he was the one who said the jet boil mm. um, was his favourite. He's bought an AeroPress recently mm. and for some reason ended up doing some research into AeroPress and found some page where people have got tattoos of AeroPress on oh their arms. <laughs> so, so, so there is a, it's a bit yeah. of an institution, I think, people I think who so. get an AeroPress and you can you can play around with making different coffees, something like different grinds and how fine the grind is, how much coffee you put in, how much water you put in. You can mm. make coffee so, much, so differently. And, yeah, that's, um, that's my choice. If you're super hardcore into it, there's that – is it Bellini or what? No, it's not Bellini. Oh, those big stove top. Um, they're, they're not even that big though. They're like – They're heavy though, aren't they? Mm, I we think don't even that, know I if we're talking heavy, about the same thing yet. The big silver stove top thing that, that does a year espresso but it also frosts your milk at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's got yeah. like a boiler on it. They are quite heavy. Um, are they? I, I think they're, they're reasonably big but it's doable for camping. I got the impression that they were sort of not much bigger than a one-litre drink bottle but shorter, a little oh, bit wider but shorter. Maybe, but then there's bits sticking off the side and stuff mm. as well. I what think. are they called? Oh, I can't I can't think of the name of it. But we'll basically it it's, a, it's well. a, um, you boil the water and as the water boils it builds up pressure, right, and then it uses that pressure to, to create the shot and then to steam the milk. Yeah. So, so you're making a, a true – if you want an actual proper coffee Stretch, shop coffee, stretched milk and that's everything. it. Yeah. But there's quite Which a few people cool. in the Facebook camping group that have got them and think oh, that okay. they are the bee's knees. Look, they look pretty good. They're well, you bought a milk frother. You bought a camping milk frother. No, I didn't. I swear you bought a camping milk frother. No, I did not buy a milk What coffee. did you buy then? Someone recommended Just it and making- you bought it. No, that was a grinder. Oh, grinder. Jeez. My apologies. But I thought you bought a milk frother. Stress- I feel offended. <laughs> <laughs> no, I seriously thought no, it was a, a milk frother. No, I wouldn't bother. But it was a bean grinder. A proper grinder, yeah. But for the camping. coffee grinder. For camping. Well, it's, it, look, I'm going <laughs> to. 
have you got it here? It's, it's in my little <laughs> coffee bag here. That literally my, goes air, everywhere with him. My AeroPress. <laughs> so it's, it's just travelled around the country with me. It comes to work with me. It goes camping with me on the yeah. weekends, all right? So everything I need to make a coffee is in here, including yeah. a little cup that pops up if I don't have a cup. So An X cup? So, um, no, it's something. My, my daughter, it's just like an X cup, but yeah. Do you yeah, know right. So, um, but not a frother. Not a frother. Seriously. Some people anyway. like froth milk. Yeah, but it's just air in the milk. Yeah, but it's so tasty. It's not stretched milk though. We're getting off topic here. We are We're getting off topic. So the thing. Everyday Alchemist <laughs> – has asked best ultralight crockery and cutlery for hiking at the lowest price. Go. Um, <laughs> Cedar Summit, Delta. the polypropylene cutlery, oh, the just gray, those gray ones. The yeah. gray ones, they're easy. Good. That's just a, sp- like a-, a fork, a spoon, a knife. You can buy a mini carabiner, chuck them on that. Easy. Bob's your uncle. They're like a dollar twenty each or something. Yeah. And then you've got the Delta plate and bowl series. Yep. I would just go with the Delta bowl. I don't think you need a plate. No. A Delta is bowl is big enough. Easy to pack. Yeah. I mean, what do you? I often think about this. What do you actually need a plate for if you're hiking? Hiking, you don't. Exactly. No, your camping's a bit different. But yeah. for hiking, I guess you were talking and ultra, aren't we? Yeah, but- the Delta bowls are so great that we have a couple in our hiking kit that my partner have pulled out and put in our camping stove, a kitchen pull out thing because he's like, I only want to use these bowls. And so now I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go and get all Delta bowls for the family because they're so great. Yeah, the, we've got Delta bowls yeah. and plates. Um, the Delta cutlery is pretty good too, but it's shorter. So if, if you're um, – is, Al, is it Alpha? Is the one you're talking about called Alpha? I can't think what it's actually called, but it's yeah, just no, their it basic. Yeah, no, it is Alpha, but it's, okay. it's plastic or polypro. Polypro, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they're really durable and they're, they're kind of sized like a mm. normal knife fork spoon would be yeah. in your kitchen. Yeah. If you want something a bit shorter, then the Delta set is quite good too. It comes Is the Delta together. set the one that, that clips together yeah. and it's metal? No, no. Oh, they might do a metal one, but it's a it's the same um, reinforced plastic. nylon. Does plastic. it come on a ring? And is it a bit shorter? It have holes in it to make it lighter. No. Oh no, that's the Alpha Light set. Oh yeah. This is a Delta set, which which is uh, the flexible plastic one. There's three things in there, and they clip together, and a little carabiner just holds. And them they all come together. coloured. They come coloured. Yeah, yeah, I don't like them. I'm not okay. a fan of them. They're not. Uh, they're not. I just, like the other ones. A for me personally, spoon. when you're eating food, if your cutlery doesn't feel good to hold and it just isn't your food isn't as good. And for me, the Delta cutlery might be amazing and some people might love it, but it's not for me. It doesn't this, give me the ultimate eating experience. This comes from someone who takes like actual proper metal knife, fork, spoon camping, right? Yeah. Yeah. In my camp kitchen, that's what I have. I have proper cutlery. I take all my hike stuff. But I do have an old version of that alpha cutlery, which is still like probably BPA mm. loaded or something yeah. from many, many, many years ago. And it, it's still it's, it's yeah, a good set, still so, boss. Yeah. So yeah. Last um, one. Two, oh. <laughs> two girls go walk about. <laughs> I think Brett Brett's put this on it. Do you know where I left my glasses? I, I swear s- they were in the lounge, but I can't see them. Look, um, I'm sorry, two girls gone walk about because I reckon you asked this question a fair while ago. I hope over, you found- or over the weekend, and I hope you found them by now. <laughs> that's all we've got on that one. Yeah, that's all we've got. Um, well, I don't know. What do you do when you lose your glasses and can't see? Um, I put. I've got a couple of pairs, so I just put a different one on. What, but I don't, I've never lost my glasses. Does Safety Ben keep an extra pair of glasses just, in his pocket just I'm in case? I wish I never said that. I know. <laughs> yeah. I've got friends who'll be listening to this too who know about the safety bank comment and they'll probably be piping in as well. So It's the best. Yeah, it's never going to go away now. That's it. We're done. All done. That's our Q&As. Q&As. There's some good uh, information in there, I reckon. Yeah, it's a bit of fun. I like these. We come yeah, in. Yeah, I really like them preparation too. preparation and we can just talk nonsense. I've got one before we go. What's your favourite yeah. ice cream flavour? Um, well, it depends where I'm buying the ice cream. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't have like well you can't there's 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 an infinite amount of flavors right that's true and I've never tried them all mm. so I don't know I mean chocolate's a safe bet so if you go into an ice cream shop for example just say um gelatismo right mm. or Copenhagen or whatever you don't just have a I'll have a chocolate thanks no oh. I'd probably go I my, I would consider anything from chocolate through coffee coffee chocolate um. I mean, I don't mind the fruity boysenberries and the raspberries. Mm, I don't like them at um, all. We got we were out with the kids on the weekend, and my daughter—I didn't get an ice cream, but my daughter got a Snickers one, and that looked pretty good. Mm. So, 
Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking scoop ice cream. I What's mean, yours? For me personally, I think anywhere chocolate to coffee, like that sort of is, is, a, is a given. But I also really like salted caramel with macadamia nut. Anything sort of close well, to that combination, that's, that's yeah. a real good one. Yeah. Mm. I think probably I'd end up just not getting ice cream so I can't choose. I'm just yeah. going to go and buy coffee instead. And you can never really go past lemon sorbet, I think, sometimes as well. Oh, no. Oh, you can? You no, can go no, past no. it? Or yeah, no, I'm not. The sorbets are all right. If I've got a choice of chocolate, coffee, ice yeah. cream and lemon sorbet, yeah. then I'm going to be going with coffee or chocolate or stickers think- or something, going with the ice cream. For me, it's often like you'll go out for dinner instead of buying dessert at a restaurant, you go out for dinner and then maybe you'll just go and get an ice cream somewhere, you know, like yeah. it's not a retreat. If it's if depending on the meal, I think lemon gelati is often great because sometimes, you know, other options can be super heavy in your tummy, whereas like a lemon gelati helps to just be like zhong, all know. clean and nice and tidy. I just go for the, the heavy one and then wish I hadn't afterwards. So. All right. Anyway, we're talking about ice creams now. We are totally talking about topic. ice creams, not camping uh, at that's all. It. We're done. Uh, thanks for joining us again for uh, another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. Got any questions, feedback, things to add to what we've talked about, please do so on the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group where we'll be on there uh, giving you our two cents worth and listening to your two cents worth as well and also on YouTube. And um, give us your feedback from any of the questions that you've heard asked today as well. If you have yeah. an opinion on those, it'd be great. Yep, especially who was it? Uh, Harry Bales. Uh, yeah, that's right, about his uh, camp setup for his trip around Australia. Awesome. See you next time. See you guys. Bye.